But let's get talking on uh, the queries that we have lined up. We have Mayurish Joshi of Angel Broking, who is here to answer all of your stock queries, and Nikhil Kotari of Etika Wealth Management on our personal finance corner. So I think we have our first caller. We have Anu, who calls in from Mumbai, and she has investments in GMR Infra. Anu, go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, yeah, I'm calling from Mumbai. Yeah. I have a GMR Infra at, uh, I bought it uh, 1,000 shares at the rate of 21. Okay. And uh, I can wait for long, but uh, don't really know, I mean, how long uh, or sh shall I make an exit from this? Okay. Are you willing to maybe take some losses and then uh, move into brighter prospects? I would rather prefer to stay in the stock. I and mean, if if uh, for a year max okay recoup your losses and then maybe exit uh, that would be your plan yeah okay mayurish what would you recommend to anu she wants she would prefer to hold on to gmr infra possibly a horizon of one year maybe make back uh, at least what she bought the stock at and then possibly look to you know shift into another stock do you think that from 12 it can go to around her buy price of 20 22 rupees Afternoon, Nikita. Very difficult uh, looking at the uh, operational performance of GM Infra. And though the management has uh, tried and, and made a lot of efforts in reducing its debt uh, overall with a lot of exercises conducted, I think the overall business uh, does not generate that many, that much amount of free cash flows. And again, I think the uh, debt on their books has been a long deterrent. So if you look at uh, the performance, uh, uh, the losses of 892 crores, I think the finance cost itself comes to around 967 crores for the quarter. And servicing of this interest, I think, takes a huge toll on the profit margins of this company. So clearly, I think from a year's perspective, very difficult to achieve the uh, cost price uh, that the investor has bought the stock at. But again, I think if she is willing to hold on for a greater period of time, I think she has to have a lot of patience. But with a year's perspective, I do not believe the cost price would be achieved. Uh, so I think if uh, she can exit the stock on rallies, I think that will be a uh, better option. The better uh, options to probably go in this market with a year's time horizon would be uh, financials. Uh, or selective pharma counters. I think we are liking Yes Bank, Orbindo Pharma, where we believe the earnings growth will be far better than sticking around with the GMO. All right. Uh, hope that advice uh, works for you, Anu. Up next, we have uh, Megha, who has written to us from Mumbai. She says she has invested in the SBI Life Unit Plus 2 regular plan in 2008 with a premium amount of about 50,000 rupees. So she's paid the premium now for three years and then she discontinued. Now she wants to know uh, that uh, the fund value is about 2.3 uh, lakhs. So she wants to know what we should do here. She should uh, withdraw, or she should continue or should she pay the premium? Will there be any penalty? Nikhil? Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, what she bought is a ULIP plan uh, and uh, the cardinal rule of uh, investment insurance is that you should keep them separately. So you should keep your insurance separate and investment separately. Uh, what she's done is that uh, in this product, uh, you have an insurance plus you have an investment. Uh, this type of product has got a lot of charges. There's a fund management charges, there's a policy allocation charges, there's a premium admission charges, mortality charges and so on. The policy which she's talking about, uh, in this policy, the first year charges was around 25%. So the 100 rupees what she invested, only 75 rupees was invested, and 25 rupees goes as a policy allocation charges. The next two years was 7.5%, fourth and fifth year was 5%, and after that it's 2% every year. So uh, on, apart from that, there are other charges like mortality, policy administration, and fund management charges. So the policy has got a lot of charges inbuilt in that. And uh, so what I recommend is that whenever you buy a ULIP product, you should always look at the charges and you should only buy products which have got a very low charges. Uh, or the best part is that keep your insurance, uh, buy a term insurance and keep your investment separately. Uh, in her policy, uh, she need to look at uh, the surrender charges. Uh, I think there will be some surrender charges because normally this policy has surrender charges up to five years and some policy have up to 10 years. Uh, but whatever, uh, but in spite of that, what I'll say is that it uh, doesn't make pay, uh, sense to pay further premiums because the charges will be higher and the return which you will generate will not be very good. So she, can, uh, she should not pay any further premium. Uh, with regard to surrender, she should look at the charges. If the charges are very low, say 1 or 2 percent, then she can surrender the policy and get the money. If the charges are very high, then I will say her to hold for some time and withdraw once the charges are over. 
Okay, all right. So that is our personal finance query. We get another stock query in now. Preeti writes to us from Bangalore, and she wants to invest five thousand rupees, preferably in the banking sector. She wants some advice on the same. Myresh, what would you advise Preeti? She has five thousand rupees. Would you advise her to buy a lot of one stock, or maybe diversify a little and buy maybe a couple of shares of different uh, banking stocks? And also, a lot of the PSU banks are extremely cheap at this time. Uh, would you recommend her to possibly dip into a couple of them? Oh yes, Ekta. I think uh, a mix of uh, both would be a preferred uh, uh, strategy. And clearly, I think out of the two, I think uh, State Bank within the PSU space have the amount she can allocate uh, towards that stock. Uh, now the performance has been mixed. So I think the cross slippages came uh, to a 12 quarter low. I think the restructuring of the books. Uh, was significantly higher, and again, I think the kind of uh, balance sheet that State Bank has, uh, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be very prudent to assume that in terms of valuations, uh, the balance sheet growth should be quite stupendous over the next couple of years. Uh, the net stress loan ratio at 6.4, uh, the CET1, the core capital adequacy ratio at 9.5 percent, uh, the retail deposits make 95 percent. Uh, so I think it's got a strong liability franchise as well, and credit growth should start picking up over the next couple of quarters. So I think it's got a strong balance sheet within the PSU pack. And again, valuation is extremely attractive at around 0.9 times price to book FY17 earnings. So clearly, I think the ROEs that are expected at around 14-15 percent uh, should come through the next couple of years, which holds the bank in good stead. Similarly, I think on the private side, ICICI Bank is something that uh, we continue to like along with Axis uh, and Yes. Uh, so for ICICI, I think uh, the numbers again have uh, been a tad bit disappointing and the asset quality, the gross net asset ratio came at 3.78%. Uh, the net asset ratio slipped around 1.61 percent, but again the management commentary was extremely positive. Uh, so I think the management outlook generally for the business in terms of credit growth, curtailing of their uh, operating costs, and credit costs being curtailed at sustainable levels, along with their balance sheet size and along with their branch network, I think that should aid uh, uh, the and then fuel the balance sheet growth going forward. Again, capital adequacy at 12.9 percent is a significantly higher than most PSU banks, which would aid uh, balance sheet expansion. So I think. The ROE is at around 16%. Uh, uh, ROE is close to 1.8, and on a price to book of around 1.2 FI17 earnings, I think it looks extremely uh, uh, attractively valued. So again, I think uh, ICICI with a target of 394, and State Bank with a target of 340, is something that I'll suggest uh, with a time horizon of 12 months. All right, that's uh, the word coming in from Mayuri.